mode. Okay, everyone, I believe we are ready to begin. My name is Rob Altman, a VP of Marketing for Harico Golf, and I'll be your moderator for today's Harico webinar titled The Basics of Ferals and Feral Installation, which will be led by Harico's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Jeff has worked in all facets of club making and repair since 1984 and has devoted the past 20 years to researching, testing, and analyzing thousands of different golf shafts. He has compiled his findings and research into the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, which is featured in the best-selling book, The Modern Guide to Club Making and Total Club Making in the 21st Century. Additionally, he has authored the annual Dynamic Shaft Fitting Addendum, which instructs club fitters in the proper fitting and selection of shafts. Both books are available for sale online at hericogolf.com. Let me get a few housekeeping items out of the way first. Your audio settings are muted, which means we cannot hear you, so don't worry about coughing or phones ringing in the background because no one can hear it. If you look at your GoToWebinar dashboard located in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the box labeled Question. If you expand this box, you'll see an empty space for you to type any questions or problems you may have throughout the webinar. Because we have limited time, we are saving the question and answer period for the end when Jeff has completed his talk. Feel free to type any questions you may have, and I'll make sure time providing that we will get to them at the end. If for any reason you must leave the webinar, don't worry, it is being recorded, and you'll be sent an email with a link to the MP3 and slideshow of the complete webinar. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Rico Golf's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. And before Jeff begins, you guys don't have to wait until the very end to type in your questions in the question box. You can type that in at any time. I uh, don't want you to forget any questions, so um, I'll make a note of your question, to, that, uh, and I'll ask that to Jeff at the very end. But as questions come to you, just type them into the box. And take it away, Jeff. Okay, thank you, Rob, and thank you, everybody, for attending today. In our last webinar, we discussed how to properly abrade the tips of both steel and graphite shafts with numerous tools and techniques. Now we're on to our next step in the assembly process, which is ferrule installation. Before we get that far, I want to first go over what the purpose of the ferrule and such things as the anatomy and the different styles that you will encounter in club making and repair. Ferrules are simply the plastic trim pieces located above the hosel on the club heads. The main purpose is to provide a nice smooth transition from the hosel to the shaft. The majority of ferrules you will see are black in color and they may have one or more trim rings in their upper or lower end to, pro to provide a nice cosmetic element to the golf club. Not all clubs uh, require ferrules, although most do today. If the club's hosel has a rounded edge, like most putters do, the club head will not require the use of a ferrule. However, if the hosel is flat with a square top edge shape, the club head has been designed to be assembled with a ferrule. Ferrules are designed to be undersized related to the inside diameter. That is, a ferrule designed for a 370 parallel tip shaft will actually be manufactured with a .368 inside diameter. This requires force fitting the ferrule onto the shaft in order to reduce the likelihood the ferrule could slide up and down the shaft at a later date. This is one reason those new to club making find the, the, this procedure tedious because they assume the ferrule should slide easily up onto the shaft tip. For many years, the outside diameter of the ferrule was typically larger than the average hosel. This required club makers to turn down or sand the ferrule flush with the outside diameter of the hosel to provide that nice smooth transition. Many club makers find turning ferrules takes up valuable time or they simply don't have the right equipment to do so. To eliminate the need for, to, for sanding the ferrules, it's useful to have an appropriate sized ferrule. In the case where the ferrule uh, is undersized or the base is smaller than the outside diameter of the hosel, this shows poor workmanship. The best scenario is to find a ferrule that fits almost precisely. You have to realize that there are tolerances with the outside diameters of the hosels, as they are hand polished during the finishing process, thus will not match up outside diameter for outside diameter each and every time. This is the reason why turning down the ferrule is the most acceptable method. At Arico, we actually made your work easier but by providing different size wood ferrules. Plus, we've standardized our hosel diameters with respect to the product category. 
That is, all our iron, hybrid, and wedge hosels are designed to be uh, 13.6 millimeters or uh, 0 0.535 inches. In our stainless steel woods, the diameters are 12.2 millimeters or 0 0.48 inches. Lastly, for our titanium drivers, the diameters are 12.7 millimeters or half inch in um, diameter at the base. This is why we offer two different size wood ferrules. Otherwise, it would require you to remove 20 thousandths from the base of the ferrule to match the stainless steel woods. When selecting which ferrule to use, the requirement to choose the, is to choose the type that's designed not only to fit the inside diameter of the shafts being used, but to suit the design of the club head as well. It's customary to select the length of the ferrule based upon the length of the hosel. For example, a short ferrule looks more appropriate on a shorter hosel, while a long ferrule is better suited to more traditional, longer, ho longer hosel club head. So let's go over each type of ferrule that you may encounter. Okay. Typically, an iron uh, ferrule, which can be used for hybrids and wedges, will range from an eighth inch to uh, one and a quarter inches tall, with the shorter ferrule being the more popular. As mentioned before, the inside diameter is slightly smaller by about two thousandths of an inch than the typical 370 shaft. This allows some tolerances when abrading the shaft so the likelihood uh, there will be a force fit and prevent the ferrule from sliding up and down the shaft. Iron ferrules are available to fit both taper and parallel tip shafts, but I find you don't need specific tapered ferrules. Since taper tip irons become larger in diameter as we move up the shaft, by the time it pushes up above the hosel, a 370 iron shaft fits tightly. Metal woods are usually much shorter in length than their iron counterparts, typically ranging from an eighth inch to three quarters of an inch tall. In, or in length. Metal wood ferrules are available in .335 inside diameters and some are available to fit 350 shaft tips. Most metal wood ferrules are designed to fit titaniums and then sanded to fit flush to the smaller uh, diameter of stainless steel fairway woods. Remember that Harico offers matching ferrules to match uh, precisely to fit flush with both types of heads. Collared ferrules, let me wait for the screen to, to change over. Okay. Collared ferrules feature a lip uh, below the base of the ferrule that will fit down inside the countersink or be beveled area in the top of the club's hosel. The theory behind collared ferrules is that they will reduce uh, stress on the graphite shaft installations. The fact is, if the hosel is properly countersunk, any type of standard metal wood ferrule or iron ferrule is perfectly acceptable. If you elect to use collared ferrules, expect to do some additional countersinking on the heads. See, the ferrules are precision.